Hey guys, Drifter here. Today we're going to be reviewing the Scuf Animal Controller, and on top of that we're going to be reviewing the glasses that Scuf is now selling. They're selling the official Call of Duty Black Ops 2 glasses, so we have a lot of stuff to review. There are two things that I'd like to get out of the way in the very beginning of this review. Number one is that I don't normally wear glasses. These are like reading glasses because my vision is sexy and awesome. We're going to get to the other glasses in a second. Number two is that I am an affiliate of Scuf and that they do pay me on commission, but I believe that even though that there is a sales incentive for me that I review products honestly and very objectively. If you would like to check out my previous review on scuff controllers where I touched on the scuff grip, the trigger stops, the dome sticks, the virtually everything, then I highly recommend you click the link on this. Ooh, I got my hands backwards. Click the link that's over here on this side of the screen and you can go watch that one. It's a 24 minute review. It's very technical, very long, and some of the points that I go into detail on there I won't be today. I'll just be touching on. But without any further ado, let's skip to the scuff animal because that's the one that you all came here to see. So let's see what I think about the scuff animal. They're now shipping them in these fancy schmancy boxes and also if you're wondering why I'm sitting on the floor that is because I'm moving soon and I sold my house. Not sold my house, I sold my kitchen table because I'm getting a new house and um, there's like nowhere else to sit anymore so I'm just kind of making do on the floor over here. This is the animal that comes in the box like this. One of the things that you'll notice is that it has a little Allen wrench right up here at the top. I don't know if I can get that in focus on the camera quite enough but uh, you use that to adjust your trigger stops. Let me see if I can pull it out all in view here. Beep, there we go. The scuff animal as you can see is kind of like a regular scuff controller but it has four paddles on the back end. I'm kind of watching my computer monitor back here to make sure. So you have A paddle, B paddle, uh, X paddle, and Y paddle so that all of these buttons here on the front you really kind of don't need them. They're like optional buttons and the goal for that is when you're playing you never want to take your hands off the thumbsticks. You want to be moving, you want to be running, you want to be jumping, you click the knife, whatever. And when you take your hands, let's see if I can get it backwards here, yep that'll work. When you take your hand off the aiming stick to jump or to reload or to change weapons or something like that, it's causing you to not be able to aim or not be able to move if you're down here messing with the d-pad. So you do have problems with that. And when they're all back here, I can just hit all of these buttons and not have to worry about doing those things. I'm going to change the camera angle because this is a little bit problematic for me to like hold this controller up in the air. We're going to go take a look at my awesome floor while I talk about the other features of the controller. Alright, I am now situated in a funny kind of position directly behind the camera so that you can see the controller and it'll be in focus. Like I said, you've got your blackout buttons here. This is the same. What this one has is a dome thumbstick and then a regular walking stick. It was kind of funny, I complained about the regular sticks in the last video and once I got to where I like the dome sticks, they give me a regular and <laughs> so it was kind of driving me crazy. Uh, you can get a better look at the paddles on the back. They're actually quite ergonomic. You can press them up here, here, down here, at the end. You can kind of hit these buttons anywhere to do your uh, trick shotting, weapon changing, gun picking up. You have the basic trigger stops, uh, which I'm going to try and get in focus here. Yeah, the light's bouncing off that just about right. Uh, these are set up to where you can adjust them with tiny little screws on the side. Let me see if I can get the light on that. Yes, these uh, screws right here, uh, such that you can get the sweet spot for your trigger. So you move it a millimeter and it shoots just like a hair trigger. And that allows you, when you're using a semi-automatic weapon like the FAL or something, to just pap, 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 pap really fast and you don't have to squeeze it all the way in, all the way out, and all the way in, all the way out. Just like tap, 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 super fast. I really kind of like scuff controllers. One of the other neat things about them is they have what's called the scuff grip. This is actually a grip for military pistols on the back. And uh, seeing it like this just doesn't do it justice compared to how good it feels in your hands. Uh, when I met up with one of my subscribers in Seattle, I let him play with a scuff controller and he picked it up and the first thing he said, like, wow, this, this feels good. It like, no shit feels good. And the only thing I could tell him was like, no shit, I wasn't shitting you. I don't, it's not my job to come on YouTube and bullshit you all day. It really legitimately feels good when you hold it in your hands. Of note, the other features about this controller that you need to know is that it is wired only. I, I'm a big fan of wireless controllers. I don't like these wires. Uh, it just seems kind of like I'm back in the Stone Age when I go back to having wires everywhere, but that's because you have buttons here on the back where your battery pack needs to be, and unfortunately that's kind of like having your cake and eating it too. I can't 
I can't have a battery pack and extra buttons, which is, is frustrating at the moment. Maybe they'll find a workaround for that eventually. But a lot of people like wired controllers in a, anyway because you don't have to spend money on the battery packs and people believe that they're faster. They're really not faster, but they are probably more cost effective in the long run. Uh, this one here in particular, I requested to come with a rotating D-pad. It was one of the features that they offered and I had never really tested it. I don't know how it works. So uh, the D-pad, as you can see, you have like a chrome button and then this black outline. This is kind of like the standard Xbox D-pad here, in which uh, because Sony and Nintendo owned all the D-pad patents, the D-pad on Xbox controllers is actually the same as your thumbsticks. It's just they put this here to confuse you. And some fellow invented a way to skip around the patents to have it uh, rotate, which if you didn't see, I did it a little bit fast there. Let me move it back. You can actually twist this and it pops up, it elevates. And what it does is it turns off the other sensors so that all you can do is left, right, up, down, and perfect diagonal if you hit both of them. There's no, it's no longer just a fancy thumbstick. It becomes a proper D-pad. For Call of Duty games, I didn't find this particularly useful. I never really had much going on with the D-pad. Maybe if I was playing fighting games or something, I would particularly like it. It's a cool feature to have. There's nothing wrong with it, but it just wasn't uh, that big of a deal for me. The other thing we need to talk about is the animal testing that was done on the scuff animal. They didn't call it the animal because it supposedly makes you more beastly when you play, but uh, it's because I actually did some animal testing on the prototype product to get some feedback from some animals. And uh, let me introduce you to the control variable or an example of what a dog does to a normal household object. <laughs> Well, thank you, 1996 Olympic Barbie, for that uh, disturbing but very informative piece on exactly the kind of damage that an animal can do to a household object. And now, without further ado, after we've seen our control variable, let's show you exactly what happens to the scuff animal when you introduce it to an animal. Alright, this controller sucks. It's called the animal. The animal! Two words meaning us, not you dirty stinking humans, us, yet clearly it is not made for animals. It's just another species controller made by humans for humans. Frickin' I mean, what am I supposed to do with this thing if I don't even have opposable thumbs? See this? These are my paws. I don't got no thumbs. Except for this little dew claw thing that I was about to cut off with a, like, bone saw, but that, I can't fit that. God! The other product that I have to review is something new that they added to their line. They got into some sort of bidding contract and somehow they won the rights to the official uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 2 glasses. These are gaming glasses and I kind of liken them to shooting glasses. I'm going to go ahead and take them out of the box here. That was something that uh, when I got these everybody was very specific about. It's like show the boxing, show the unboxing, come on we want you to do the unboxing. I'm like really it's just just a box of stuff, but oh my god, I forgot I had to get it out of the back too. <laughs> my lighting's kind of silly, it's casting shadows everywhere. There's about three or four different style of glasses, and for some reason I got the one that sends me back to 1970. Bam! And we are now back in the 70s, and I have some serious like uh, Starsky and Hutch kind of glasses going on here. What these are, are they're a lot like shooting glasses. If you've seen people go to a gun range, they wear the yellow glasses. What that is supposed to do is kind of diminish the sunlight, and for the effect of these glasses, that's going to be diminishing the harsh blue lights from computer screens and white lights, and you get an overall more yellowish tone. So, <clears throat> a voice cracked right there. That was actually kind of bad. And if you can see from right here, they're very angular, they're very bent in the middle. What that does is it essentially adds a small magnification, like a 5 or 10% magnification. So I'm going to add an effect here that simulates what it looks like when I put on the glasses. So this is normal vision for me, everything's fine. When I put on the glasses, everything looks about like this. You'll see that it is very slightly zoomed in and that there is a color change. Again, what these are designed to do are to focus you in on the TV or the computer screen and allow you to game longer because you won't have as many harsh lights hitting your eyes, you won't have dry eyes and those sort of problems. I played with these, they're nice, but they crunch the colors a little bit much for me. Uh, I actually was able to game long longer, I was kind of skeptical of that, but the dry eyes, the harsh 
eye problems. It wasn't as noticeable with these glasses, but I I don't know how much I would really use them. I think I might have should have gone for a different one. Now I feel like I'm in the 70s. I should have got a more angular style to uh, be more 80s, because 80s is definitely more of the thing for me. However, what I will say about these guys is compared to something like Gunner Optics or a couple other competitors that are like $180, $200 for a pair of gaming glasses, these are can't remember if they were $29.99 or $35. They were remarkably cheap. They were cheaper than like Walmart glasses and they're actually a very solid kind of product which is good in a way. I don't know if I would have bought them on my own violation but they're not bad. Definitely not bad. Bow wicka wow wow back in the 70s. We're gonna finish out this video with some regular old gameplay commentary. I chose this gameplay mostly because I did really good and also because I was playing with Woody and I'm the Dink. I'm pretty sure that Woody's Gamer Tag is a scuff, actually I know Woody's Gamer Tag is a scuff sponsor and I think that I'm the Dink is too. If he's not, he should totally consider it because they're sweet. Uh, anyway, and what I wanted to say is that while the scuff controllers will definitely make you play better, they won't make you unstoppable or a godless killing machine or anything like that. I believe that they do give you a slight edge, but it's just that. It's a marginal improvement. The biggest thing about the controller for me is that it feels so much better than the original Xbox controller. It makes me wonder why the original controller wasn't designed that way to begin with. And that's a very subjective thing, but that's the crux of the interview, the crux of the product. And like I said earlier, I just kind of had a scuff controller on me when I was in Seattle, and I met up with a subscriber, and he was like, ooh, can I touch that? And I was like, yeah, sure, play with it. And he picked it up, and the first thing he said is, wow, this feels really good, and the grip feels really good. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not bullshitting you guys here on YouTube to sell controllers, because they don't pay me enough to bullshit you. I don't really get paid very much. My main payment from scuff is that I get their controllers and their prototypes and stuff, which is really fun for me to play with. But... Uh, it is a very nice product. I'm going to say that you will probably enjoy it if you play a lot of games. If you play a lot of Xbox, if you play a lot of PS3, you will definitely get a lot of enjoyment out of the scuff controllers. If you play PC, well, there's no scuff products on PC just yet. But if you're not a serious gamer, if it's not a, a big deal for you, then you probably won't care. But if you already have headsets, if you've already got a big gaming TV, this will go along with everything else and you will genuinely enjoy it. They're a bit pricey, but they're definitely worth the money. And I do have a story about scuff that isn't really related to selling anything I tested the company uh, a little bit unfairly I got a message on Twitter from a 13 year old girl I know this the story sounds like it's it's going very bad but anyway she contacted me and said that her family lost everything in Hurricane Sandy and both her and her brother were really big uh, online gamers and their controllers were somewhat damaged and they were having a hard time playing and they didn't have a lot of money and she's like can you please get me a scuff controller for Christmas or send me your old scuff controller when they send you a new one and I talked to scuff about it and I asked them if I can please have one free controller to give away to charity and it took scuff about one day just you know like one email cycle to get back to me and it all okayed all the way up through the company and everybody says yeah and then just uh get the girl's address and whatever and make sure that there's no trolling going on and we'll send you a controller so that they can have a happy Christmas. Unfortunately, uh, when the parents found out, they flipped out about, you know, their children contacting strange men on the internet and uh, there was a pride issue involved and we can provide for our own children, we don't need your own, your damn charity, blah blah blah. So. Uh, one subscriber missed out on a on a scuff controller for Christmas, and I'm sorry about that. But I, I told Scuff, and they're like, "Look, you hold on to the controller. We've already got it budgeted. You just find something to do with it." And I actually managed to find another subscriber who is in a completely not completely similar, but similar enough situation that warranted a charitable controller. At least it did for me. I'm gonna give you more details about that. Uh, a little bit later in a different video that I have planned with completely different footage and other things but it makes me feel more comfortable about the company that I'm doing business with because as even though I'm talking about them now in your head you're saying yeah they do this because then in a video he can say scuff is charitable when I made the pitch to them I didn't say anything about charity I made no mentions of making a video it wasn't yeah, well, I did. Oh, yeah, it was a charity controller, but I didn't mention a shout out. I didn't say that I would tell anybody. I didn't mention making a video. There was no promotional aspect. It was just like, hey, as a personal favor, can you please give this person a free controller? Because I think they really deserve it. And it was like a no questions asked. Sure, we trust you. We think you know that this person totally deserves it. We'll send them a free controller. You're good to go. No requirements. No nothing. 
And that makes me feel good about the company because it shows that they're all, you know, normal, real people that aren't just driven by the bottom line. You find some bosses in some companies that'll really pinch pennies about things like that and get all up in your butt. But everybody was totally okay with the idea and they encouraged it and it shows that they're all real, nice, normal people with hearts and compassion for others. And I, I like that. It makes me feel comfortable about the company. And I'll show you the results of the charitable controller in a video that I've got planned for after Christmas. But for now, I just hope that you enjoyed all of this review the silly parts and the serious parts and if you have any questions you're more than welcome to shoot me a private message but please please don't shoot me a private message with with a sad story because I get like 40 of those a day with people that have cancer and they're dying and but they want to shout out before they die or their house burned down or something crazy like that please don't send me that anything else about controllers or anything I'll be glad to answer drifter out